good Thursday morning, everyone. Skylar Callen here for another episode of Between the Ears, and we will continue our basketball talk this week. Uh, somewhat around the coaching search, but more so around former West Virginia head coach Bob Huggins. Came across the Hoppy Kerchival article of Metro News the other day and found it quite interesting. There's some things in there that I agreed with, some not so much. Or maybe not a, a, a lack of agreement, but maybe just a surprise that he put some of the things in there that he did. Um, but nonetheless, here's here's a little bit of an, uh, a piece here from that article, again, from Hoppy Kirchival, WV Metro News. One name that will not, in all capital letters, be on WV's radar is Bob Huggins, the Hall of Fame coach in West Virginia sports legend, was forced to resign last year after dropping an anti-gay slur on a Cincinnati radio show and weeks later getting arrested in Pittsburgh for drunk driving. Huggins made matters worse by claiming he never really resigned and threatening to sue the university. And went on to say about how he has pretty much burned uh, all of his er, well-earned goodwill with the university over the years. And yes, I I agree with a lot with what was said there. Um, I don't see him being in this coaching search uh if he is i don't i don't see it being him seriously being considered for the job and yeah you could probably say that he did probably burn some some of that uh that that goodwill i mean he he's done a lot for this university he's done a lot for the state but he probably lost a lot of trust from a lot of folks within the administration and within the athletic department However, I don't know if the tone here is really warranted. And it's not necessarily a a shot at Hoppy. That's not at all what I'm going with here. Um, It's more so just, I, I think it's time. Okay. It's time for not only Bob Huggins, but everybody to move past what happened last summer. It's been several months and we all knew what was going to play out. We all knew that there's probably going to be a little bit of back and forth between Huggins and the university. We all kind of knew that this was going to be a trickle down effect into the, the, the team, this, the season and how they would probably find some struggles and that it would put Josh Allert in a tough position. And when this coaching search came back around this spring, that this discussion would come up and and his name would be wanted by a significant portion of the fan base and so on and so forth. But I think at this point, there's really no need to talk about what he did on the radio show or getting the DUI in Pittsburgh. It is what it is. It happened. Happened a long time ago. now, And I think for the majority of West Virginia fans, they're ready to move on from that too. And that same portion of fans would probably like to have him back. Some may not. But I think we can all agree that we're ready to move on past what happened last summer. It doesn't do the university, it doesn't do the program any good to sit here and marinate in it almost a year later. What Bob Huggins has done, and again, I I have not really shared my opinion on this whole matter before. But here's here it is. What he did was a mistake. There's no question about it. But at the end of the day, the man has taken accountability for his actions and has done so repeatedly. And when you do that, when you kind of keep an arm's length away from the program and actually what's going on at the basketball facility 
he's done that. He's he's let Josh have his room. He's not intervened. I I don't understand why we're still talking about this, and why I'm having to come up here on this show and talk about this. But here we are. It's time to move on. But it's also time, really, in my opinion, this is really what this episode is for, is to recognize everything that Pugs did while he was the head coach at WVU and what he is still going to do moving forward, whether that's, again, returning as the head coach, more than likely not, or just being a a citizen of West Virginia. The amount of money that he has raised for the fish fry is unbelievable. All that money going to cancer research, and obviously it's something that's near and dear to his heart, but as can be said for a lot of folks, not only in just West Virginia, but across the world. He doesn't have to do stuff like that. He doesn't have to do basketball clinics like he's done over the years. He doesn't have to to do all these guest appearances, but he does. He takes time out of his day to show up and make a difference. And he's going to do that again with the fish fry this year, even though he's not the head coach anymore. He could easily, you know, look at this situation and say, "Ah, you know what, with everything that went on in the summer, I don't know if – me doing this may cause a distraction and may bring up a lot of that at the event. He doesn't care. He's moving forward. And that's what everyone else should do. But to treat like, to, but to treat hugs like he doesn't mean anything, but <laughs> like, say, a Dana Holgerson a guy that just came here and basically just coached for a handful of years, right? That's that's disrespectful. Huggins did a whole hell of a lot on and off the court while he was the head coach. You know, we can have our opinions about whether or not he should be returning as head coach or not. I've even shared my opinion on that this week. I said, no, I don't think it, it makes sense. I'd love to see it. I would but not in this circumstance. I think it's, I think it's just time to move in a different direction and it's okay to feel both ways. It's okay to, to recognize everything that Huggins has done and respect everything he's done, but in the end still feel like it's a better thing to go in a different direction. Especially when you have a new AD that he's got to make sure the sire is, is, is the right one. And he's got to have the backing of the administration and of the people in that, that athletic department. But this guy has done so much, again, not only off the court, but on it. He made West Virginia into a national conversation every year, mostly every year, with the exception of two or three seasons. Took this team to a Final Four for the first time in 50 years. Won a Big East championship, first ever. Took them to three consecutive Big 12 championships, three consecutive Sweet 16s. That kind of stuff didn't happen on a regular basis around here. Bob Huggins brought that to Morgantown. So we need to put some respect on Hugs' name even with all the stuff that happened a year ago. This program, this job, we talked about the coaching search here a little bit recently. It would not be as attractive of a job if it weren't for Bob Huggins. That's just the flat-out truth. So I think we can get caught up into, again, all the off-court stuff. We can continue to to regurgitate that as much as we want to, but it's not going to do anything. It doesn't do any good. It doesn't make any sense to dwell on it he's moved on we all need to move on going back to my point here it's okay to feel both ways it's okay to want something different but still respect 
the guy that brought West Virginia so much success over the years. And I think there needs to – this divide of the fan base, it needs to go away too. There's this this half that says, yes, Huggins has got to come back. The university did so much wrong for him. Yada, yada, yada. Got to bring him back. And then you have this side that's absolutely not. Hell no. Huggins did put the program through a mess, and and he should never be able to have anything to do with WV basketball and da-da-da-da-da. It's, it's so far in each direction. And that divide has got to go away. This is one of the reasons why I believe they just need to go in a different direction. It's not the main reason. The main reason is because I think it's just it's just time to go in a different direction anyways. Even if Huggins comes back, I mean, how long are you really talking here? I mean, he was – I wouldn't say he was contemplating retirement, but, I mean, he had hinted, you know, he was getting closer, right? How, I don't know how many more years he would have gone. But I'm sure at some point he would have just liked to kick back and enjoy life and not be in charge of all this crap that's going on with the NIL and Portal and God knows what else is coming next. But I think there, that divide needs to go away. And a, a big way to do that or an easy way to do that is you hire a coach, a young, exciting head coach, who's got a pretty strong resume and that can come in and just win the whole fan base over. And as crazy as it is, as I'm about to say this, because now there, there is sort of a divide there, but similar to Neil Brown, right? When Neil first was hired as the head football coach, everybody, everybody was on the same page. This is the guy for the job. He won you over with the press conference. He was polar opposite from Dana Holgerson. And I think that was a huge win for Neil because a lot of people didn't really care for Dana. And even though he's not from West Virginia, he's from this region. He understands what it means, what it takes. He gets it. That's the biggest thing from his, his very opening press conference. You could just tell he gets it. The results weren't there for the first four years. And that's what caused the friction within the fan base and frustration. Now there's a non-win season. But on the basketball side of things, if you can get a hire like that, you get a hire that everyone can get around and say, yeah, he gets it. He understands it. I can get behind that. Then we can all kind of push this friction between the two sides of the fan bases aside in regards to Huggins and start to really, truly appreciate everything that he did. Because that can't get lost. That can absolutely 100% cannot get lost. At some point, and I would even argue it should have happened already. Because again, this is months, months ago what we're talking about here that happened. He should be honored at WVU Coliseum. And not just the ordinary, you know, here's Bob Huggins. Let's give him a round of, of applause and, and do a tribute video. I'm talking, let's, let's throw his name on the court or let's, let's, let's put a, a monument outside the, the Coliseum something significant again he's one of two people to take west virginia to the final four he won a big east championship this guy's done a lot he's one of the winningest coaches in college basketball history and he's a morgantown guy he's from west virginia you need to honor that so again we can get lost in all this mess about the, the stuff that happened last summer, but it doesn't do anything for anybody. Let's move on from it. It's time. It's time to move on. It's time to recognize what he's done and move into this next era of West Virginia basketball 
with whoever the heck they decide to hire. That'll do it for me here this morning on Between the Years. I'm Skyla Callen. Make sure you hit the subscribe button on YouTube at Mountain Years Now. Give us a like while you're at it and a follow on X at the same handle. We'll be back tomorrow to wrap things up with another episode.